tangent of alpha will end up being equal to 2. If I rearrange for alpha, I get alpha is equal to the tangent inverse. This is how you rearrange, right? You divide by tangent on both sides. It's equal to 2. You put this into your calculator, you'll find out that alpha is equal to approximately 63 degrees. So I definitely want you to try that. Now, going back up to my little diagram right here, right, what that means is I figured out that this tiny little angle right here is 63 degrees. Well, how do I get the entire thing? Well, if you look, to get from this point right here to here, I've gone 180 degrees. So theta is just going to be equal to 180 degrees plus what my uh, uh, reference angle was. Okay? So theta will be equal to 180 degrees plus alpha. And we know that alpha is 63 degrees. So we found out that theta is approximately 243 degrees. And why I say approximately is because we did round. Let's go to the next page. So, uh, to finish this off, the definitions of the trigonometric ratios can be used to determine exact values for the primary trigonometric ratios of angles related to the special angles 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. And these are going to be known, I'm going to refer to these as your special triangles. And we're going to be using these quite a bit in this unit, okay? specifically dealing with angles that uh, have 30, 45, or 60 in them. All right? So the first special triangle that we have looks like so. It's known as the 45, 45, 90 triangle. Of course, if it's 45, 45, 90, then these are both 45, the other one's 90. We actually know that both those sides are the same. And if we arbitrarily make this side 1, then this side must also be 1. And by using Pythagoras, you could figure out that this side is root 2. Okay, so I'm going to be referencing that in a bit here. Now if I come up to this next one, we have a triangle known as the 30, 60, 90 triangle. 30 we'll put there. 60 we'll put there. And in terms of this one, if you make the side opposite the 30 degree 1, then these sides using trigonometry, using Pythagoras, fall as being root 3 and so, um, like I said, I'm going to be referencing those quite a bit. I basically just wanted to make sure that those are in your uh, in your notes. Now, on the uh, on the previous uh, couple pages, what we played around with, right, was looking at where the trigonometric ratios are uh, positive or negative. Well, there's a nice little rule that we can use to remember that, and that's the cast rule. Okay, the cast rule looks like this. We write C, A, S, and T. And what that means, that tells you what ratio is going to be positive in each quadrant. The A stands for all. The S stands for sine. The T stands for tangent. And the C stands for cosine. So what I mean is every one of the ratios, for instance, is positive in quadrant 1. Okay, this being quadrant 1, 2, When you get into quadrant 2, the only thing that is positive is the sine ratio. The only thing that's positive in quadrant 3 is the tangent ratio. And the only thing that's positive in quadrant 4 is the cosine ratio. All right? So you'll see how we use this information for this uh, next question. Example 2, state the quadrants. Notice how I have the S right there. There's going to be more than 1. In which um, cosine of theta is equal to 1 over root 2. Well, what quadrants is cosine positive in? Well, using my cast rule, it's going to be, of course, positive in quadrants 1. That's where everything is, and in pod quadrant 4. So we would say quadrants 1 and quadrant 4. Okay. Now, the same or a very similar question. Determine which values of theta satisfy cosine theta is equal to 1 over root 2. Well, using my cast rule, for instance, since I see that this ratio right here is positive, I know that I'm going to have a triangle that's in this quadrant and a triangle that's in this quadrant, okay? because that's where cosine is positive. And because I know that the ratio is 1 over root 2, that means in terms of cosine, the adjacent would be 1, hypotenuse is root 2, so I can write it like so. And therefore, if I see a 1 and a root 2, I know that I'm dealing with the 45, 45, 90 triangle. That must be 1 there, that must be 1 there. That tells me that this reference angle right in there is going to be 45 degrees. All right, so that means that theta will be equal to 45 degrees. And it also tells me that this reference angle right here is going to be 45 degrees. But remember, in order to get theta, you go in standard position all the way around counterclockwise to get to here. 
And in order to get that angle right, we have 360 degrees minus what your reference angle is, and that would be 360 degrees minus 45 is 315 degrees. Okay. Very, very big lesson. Uh, a lot of different things that we covered, the cast rule, the special triangles, knowing when things are uh, positive, uh, knowing how to determine your reference angles. All right. This is probably the largest and most important lesson of this unit.